Microtik bonding modes balance round robin. In this video, Microtik bonding modes balance RR. We are in the second part of our bonding modes series, and this time we will configure balance round robin. So, a few literature first, if you may. Balance RR is the only mode that will send packets across multiple interfaces that belong to the same TCP IP connection. In balance RR mode, when utilizing multiple sending and multiple receiving links, packets are often received out of order, which then result in segment retransmission. For other protocols such as UDP, it is not a problem if client software can tolerate out-of-order packets. Balance RR is also useful for bonding several wireless links. However, it requires equal bandwidth of all bonded links. If the bandwidth of one bonded link drops, then the total bandwidth of bond will be equal to the bandwidth of the slowest link. To read more about Microtik implementation of Balance RR, please visit the official documentation website wiki.microtik.com. Without further delay, let's show how to configure Balance RR on a pair of RB750 GR3 or more commonly known as Microtik Hex. So for our Microtik Bonding Modes Balance RR demonstration, so we have a pair of Microtik Hex. So we are now logged in at MT1. So System Resources. And as you can see, this is a Microtik Hex or RB750GR3 with the following router OS firmware. For MT1 as well as MT2, it is currently in no default configuration. So there is no IP address, there is no bridge and bridge port assignment, and there are no other things such as IP firewall filter rules, not and other configuration that comes with the system default configuration. So as per interfaces, so we go to interface menu, interface tab. So we have Ether2, which is the connection to this virtual machine or this computer. Ether3 is a connection to our CRS for a demonstration a bit later. So we have Ether4 and Ether5 will be reserved for our balance rr demonstration and currently not running so because there is no cable that is connected to these ports and we will just connect the cables once we have the balance rr configured let's now proceed to configure bonding balance rr on our mt1 so we go to interfaces so if we can find the bonding tab, so we go here, so we'll select bonding and we have the plus sign to create our bonding interface. So let's click the plus sign. So click the plus sign and here at the general tab, you'll have the name of the bonding interface. So we will just accept the default settings so for example bonding one in the mtu and the arp setting so next we go to the bonding tab and from here we will select the slaves or the interfaces that are part of the bonding so in our case that will be ether 4 and ether 5 so here in the slaves configuration we will select Ether 4. We will click the down arrow to add more slaves. So in our case, we will add Ether 5. And the mode is already as balance RR. So as you can see, there are other options. So in our demonstration, so this is balance round robin. 
so we will select this mode so i would like to seek for your patience that we will just leave the other values as default link monitoring transmit hash policy and other settings here as we will discuss this after we have discussed or we have gone through the bonding modes choices so we will discuss this or we have a demonstration on the later part of our bonding mode series in our Microtech device. So let's click OK. So we have our bonding one and we have the slaves and the mode. So ideally you won't see this here because I have changed the show columns and add in the slaves and mode in order for you guys to see the slaves and the mode for this bonding interface so if you'll notice as well if you go inside so it's still an inactive ports for ether 4 and ether 5 it's not running yet because of course there is no cable that is connected to our interfaces yet so if you go back to our interface and for our balance rr ether 4 and ether 5 there is now an s for slave but it's not a bridge port slave but rather than an interface bonding slave but there is no r or running yet or any flag that will tell us that this particular ether 4 and ether 5 is now an active port so it is not yet so let's quickly do the same on our MT number two. So we are now on our second Microtik hex. So the same Ether2 is connected to this computer. Ether3 is to our CRS. Ether4 and Ether5 are reserved for bonding. So there is no S for slave. So meaning to say we haven't configured bonding. So we go to bonding tab. And let's click the plus sign to add in our bonding interface. So we go to general for the name of the bonding, which is we will accept bonding one. And we go to the bonding tab to add in our slaves. So just the same for our slaves, we will select Ether 4. Let's click the down arrow to add more slave. And we will add in Ether 5. The mode will still be balance rr and again we will not change anything here and we will just explain those in our future bonding mode videos so for now let's click apply and let's click ok so this is our bonding interface for our microtech number two slaves ether 4 ether 5 balance rr currently it's an inactive port ether 4 and ether 5 so if you go back to the interface, it has now a slave flag, but it is not yet running. For testing, we will have a new Microtik in our topology, that is MT3, which we will run Microtik's Traffic Generator tool. Before we can proceed with our testing, let's fulfill first some prerequisites. In our topology, we now have some IP addresses that we need to take care of. So we have our, for our bonding interface, that will be 10.2.0.0 slash 30 network. And for MT1, that will be dot one. So we go to IP addresses, click the plus sign. So that will be 10.2.0.0 on our bonding interface okay so click apply click ok so we have one more for our ether3 interface so click the plus sign so that will be 10.1.0.1 slash 30 on our ether3 interface that is connected to our microtik crs device click apply click ok to accept the settings changes let's do the same on our mp2 let's fulfill the ip address requirements so click the plus sign so that will be 10.2.0.2 slash 30 
on our bonding interface click apply click ok click the plus sign so we have for our ether tree that is 10.3.0.1 slash 30 on ether tree interface click apply click ok so review 10.2.0.2 on our bonding interface and 10.3.0.1 on our ether3 interface so we will just get back to the ip address configuration should the need for troubleshooting arises at this point the cables between the mt1 and mt2 via ether4 and ether5 are connected as well as the connection from mt1 to our crs and mt2 to the CRS as well is also connected. So if you take a look at the interfaces, interface tab, so you have the Ether3 as running, as well as the Ether4 and Ether5, which previously is only with an S flag. Now it's with an R, so RS running and slave. So this will tell us that the bonding configuration for our balance rr is now running we'll have some quick confirmation first if indeed the bonding interface is up so mt1 is 10.2.0.1 so we should be able to reach 10.2.0.2 so let's do a ping via the terminal so ping 10.2.0.2 will be the IP address of MT number 2. So you'll see that it is doing some round robin on the interfaces, Ether 4 and Ether 5. And yes, we are able to reach MT number 2. We can also perform some sort of bandwidth test. So tools, bandwidth test. And this is MT1, so our test will be going to MT2, which is 10.2.0.2. For this quick test, we'll just stick with the what is default, UDP, direction receive, and the username and password. But this is not a better representation of bandwidth test. What's better is you should have a computer or a client behind MT1 and performing a bandwidth test to a client or server computer that is connected behind MT number 2. But for the purposes of saving some time, let us just go ahead with this bandwidth test. So let's click start. So connecting, running, and we are doing direction receive. So we have only for Rx values. So as you could see, you are able to exceed 1000 Mbps, although not really reach the 2 gig. But this should just represent that we are able to see to it that our bonding is indeed working as we are exceeding our X speeds. For our final testing, we'll make use of Microtix Traffic Generator. So we go to Tools, Traffic Generator, but this is already set up for the purposes of, again, time saving in our CRS. So we will have just future videos on what is the setup for Traffic Generator. Or you could visit Microtik Wiki website on how to set up the Traffic Generator. So we have maximized our winbox for this Traffic Generator test. So we have quick Mbps 400 and we have added measure out of order packets and set to yes. Since for balance RR, we have to monitor if we have out of order packets. So let's go ahead and run this test by pressing enter and let's run it for a while. and let's quit so in our very quick test we don't have any out of order packets yet as indicated 
in the column rx triple o or out of order packets see you on our next microtik bonding modes tutorial thank you for watching